I was glad when they said, let us go to the house of the Lord. Good morning. Good morning. And welcome to worship this morning. I have several announcements <clears throat> I'd like to draw your attention to. First, please be sure to fill out an attendance card if you haven't yet, and then place it in the offering plate so that we know that you're here. There are several announcements on the announcement page along with prayer concerns. Um, Tuesday school is getting ready to get underway. Um, enrollment is open right now and we still need help with one teacher for music. So if you are interested in that, please talk to Jen or if you know a child who would benefit from a Tuesday morning school, um, please talk to Jen and she'll get, uh, get you squared away. Also, we have a number of volunteers that we are seeking. Um, we have coffee hour host and hospitality. Um, I think we ran out today. So we have one person that's hosting today and then um, every Sunday is open from here through the fall. So if you can do hospitality on a Sunday morning with coffee and a little light snack, that would be great. Uh, there are sign-up sheets in the Narthex and also in Scott Hall. Um, Presbytery is coming up on um, September 17th. We'll need volunteers in every aspect of the life of the church to help with that. Presbytery convenes at 3 o'clock. We'll need volunteers from about 1 or 1.30 um, until, it, until it's over in the evening. You don't have to stay the whole time. Um, so we'll have a sign-up sheet out in the narthex um, in the next week or so. Also, um, session meets on Tuesday evening at 6.30. And next week in worship, we'll have communion. And then the following week on September 8th, We'll have our kickoff for the fall programming with our church picnic, and um, the community life crew will be manning the grills to serve hot dogs and hamburgers, and we're asking the congregation to join in with potluck uh, to bring salads and uh, sides. So um, there will be more information coming out here in the next couple of weeks. Uh, I'd like to invite Howard Warham to please uh, say a few words about Grief Share. Good morning. On behalf of the Grief Share facilitators, I want to thank all of you. Some have prayed for us, probably most of you have. Some have served us uh, food. We have the corner cooks who have done a great job uh, serving us uh, delicious food every Monday or every Wednesday. Um, so we're going to start up our, our fifth 13-week uh, series, uh, September 4th. And we've had a lot of people that have benefited from this. Uh, as is typical with uh, Grief Share, most of the participants are not members. So this is an outreach that you've uh, helped us uh, have here. Um, we begin at 6 o'clock with a meal. And then we have discussions and professionally made 30-minute uh, videos that deals with topics associated with grief, anger, regret, um, why did God do this, uh, those kind of things. And a lot of people have benefited from this. Um, please arrive early if it's your first time attending. Um, let's see. Like I said, we start September 4th through December 4th, except for the Wednesday before Thanksgiving. And we will have a special thing called Surviving the Holidays on that Monday. Uh, that's a grief share thing also. We asked $20 to cover the cost of materials, but we have money, money available for those who cannot afford it. Um, all right. Then now tomorrow we're having a special meeting for the leaders. If you're or if you're just interested in finding out what grief share is all about, and there will be pizza. So uh, talk to myself or my wife or Carolyn Collins or uh, anybody that's been uh, involved in grief share. Thank you. 
Let us prepare our hearts and minds for worship. back. <laughs> Would you uh, do the call of worship with me? How lovely is your dwelling place, O God, most gracious, most gracious host. Even the sparrow finds a home and the swallow a nest at your table of grace, O homemaking God. Let us uh, do the prayer of the day together. Emmanuel, God with us, you desire for us to abide in you as you abide in us. But we are restless and turn back from following you because of the way of wisdom, the way of sacrifice, the way of gratitude, the way of interdependence is more difficult than we expected. May we proclaim with Peter you have the words of eternal life, and with the psalmist, a day in your house is better than a thousand elsewhere. May we linger with you at table rather than driving through to other destinations, finally present with you, with each other, and with our own spirits. This we pray through the gracious invitation of the one who set the table for us, Jesus Christ, our Savior and friend. Amen.
In the Reformed tradition, when we worship, we confess not only our own sin, but that of the world, in the confidence that God's grace will abound. It is only by the power of God that we are able to stand against evil. Trusting in God's grace, let us confess our sins. O Lord, you are near to the brokenhearted, and you save the crushed in spirit. Be near to us in our brokenness, and love us into wholeness. You are near to the people who are hurting, but we keep our distance to avoid hard conversations. You envision a world where all needs are met, but we hoard our possessions and cling to our power. Be near to us in our brokenness, and love us into wholeness. By your mercy, forgive our sins. By your grace, free us to try again. Amen. Now, stand firm in your faith, covered by the saving grace of God and ready to proclaim the gospel of peace. In the name of Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Thanks be to God. May the peace of Christ be with you all. Please turn to those around you and greet them with a sign of the peace. Faithful God, how blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness. Sanctify us by your word and spirit so that we may glorify you in the company of the faithful. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, amen. First lesson is from Joshua. Uh, This is after the Israelites had gone into the promised land. Then Joshua gathered all the tribes of Israel to Shechem and summoned the elders, the heads, the judges, and the officers of Israel, and they presented themselves before God. And Joshua said to all the people, Now therefore, revere the Lord and serve him in sincerity and in faithfulness. Put away the gods that your ancestors served beyond the river and in Egypt, and serve the Lord. Now, if you are unwilling to serve the Lord, choose this day whom you will serve, whether the gods your ancestors served in the region beyond the river or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you are now living. But as for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. Then the people answered, Far be it from us that we should forsake the Lord to serve other gods. For it is the Lord our God who brought us and our ancestors up from the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery, and who did those great signs in our sight. He protected us all along the way that we went and among all the peoples through through whom we passed. And the Lord drove out before us all the peoples, the Amorites who lived in the land. Therefore, we also will serve the Lord, for he is our God. Second lesson comes to us from Paul's letter to the Ephesians. Finally, be strong in the Lord and in the strength of his power. Put on the whole armor of God so that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For our struggle is not against enemies 
of blood and flesh, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the cosmic powers of this present darkness, against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God so that you may be able to stand, withstand on that evil day and having done everything to stand firm. Stand therefore and fasten the belt of truth around your waist and put on the breastplate of righteousness. As shoes for your feet, put on whatever will make you ready to proclaim the gospel of peace. With all these, take the shield of faith with which you will be able to quench all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Take the helmet of salvation, the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Pray in the spirit at all times in every prayer and supplication. To that end, keep alert and always persevere in supplication for all the saints. Pray also for me so that when I speak, a message may be given to me to make known with boldness the mystery of the gospel for which I am an ambassador in chains. Pray that I may declare it boldly as I must speak. Good morning. At this time, I'd like to invite any children to come forward. Anyone? Anyone? Yes. Good morning. Good morning. You guys have a busy morning. Thanks for singing. So, today I wore something special for our time together. Do you guys know what these are? A little small, but... So I have my shield and my breastplate, and I couldn't find my helmet or my sword or even my lightsaber. But sometimes we just got to go with what we got, right? So how we just read a passage for us from the Bible. I'm sure you guys were listening, right? Yeah. And um, I thought about how it would be good to talk about what he just shared today in worship because um, we're starting back to school. You guys are starting back to school. And um, it got me thinking about how you might need to, like, put God's armor on, too, um, especially with going back to school. So when you hear the word armor, what do you think about? Armor, like, do you, like, have a vision in your mind? Or you certainly don't think of this, do you? Like me wearing this. What do you think about? Nothing. So, like, when I thought about this, I, when I thought putting on God's armor, I could picture, like, a knight, like, in a movie with those, like, that chainy stuff on that, like, keeps him safe and, you know, the big helmet with the steel thing coming down. You know what I'm talking about? You've seen movies like that or maybe went to, like, a Renaissance festival or something? No. So anyway, um, so an armor is something that like protects us and kind of gives us strength or keeps us from getting hurt, hopefully, makes us a little bit stronger. And why do you think that we might need the armor of God? To be protected, protected yep. Yeah. And like I thought about you guys needing it because sometimes, you know, going back to school or just going through life every day can be kind of tough, right? So the Bible passage that we heard reminds us that things can be tough, life can be tough, but we have everything we need with God. So it reminds us that we belong to God, and it's up to us to share God's love with everyone, even when it's hard. We might not be in an actual battle or really need a helmet or a sword or a shield, 
But just doing the simple things that we do every day can be tough. Sometimes situations can be hard, and sometimes people can be hard, mean and nasty. You guys ever met a mean and nasty person? Yeah. And sometimes decisions can be hard. So I hope that the message today and seeing me in this will remind you to be brave enough to live your life for God and to share God's love, not just when it's easy, but when things are challenging too. And I want you to go out and be cool, thin mint, sharing God's love. Thank you. Let's pray. I'll say some, you say it back. Holy Spirit, thank you for the words and the messages we read in the Bible. Guiding us as we live each day. May we journey into each day, taking up the whole armor of God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you. Our, our uh, responsive reading today is taken from Psalms 34, verses 14 to 22. Read with me, please. Depart from evil and do good. Seek peace and pursue it. The eyes of the Lord are on the righteous, and his ears open to their cry. The face of the Lord is against evildoers to cut off the remembrance of them from the earth. And the righteous cry for help. The Lord hears and rescues them from all their troubles. The Lord is near to the brokenhearted and saves the crushed in spirit. Many are the afflictions of the righteous. The Lord rescues them from them all. He keeps all their bones. Not one of them will be broken. Evil brings death to the wicked, and those who hate the righteous will be condemned. The Lord redeems the life of his servants. None of those who take refuge in him will be condemned.
we pick up in John's Gospel with a little bit of overlap from last week. Hear these words from Jesus. Those who eat my flesh and drink my blood abide in me and I in them. Just as the living Father sent me and I live because of the Father, so whoever eats me will live because of me. This is the bread that came down from heaven, not like that which your ancestors ate and they died, but the one who eats this bread will live forever. He said these things while he was teaching in the synagogue at Capernaum. When many of his disciples heard it, they said, This teaching is difficult. Who can accept it? But Jesus, being aware that his disciples were complaining about it, said to them, Does this offend you? Then what if you were to see the Son of Man ascending to where he was before? It is the Spirit that gives life. The flesh is useless. The words that I have spoken to you are spirit and life, but among you there are some who do not believe. For Jesus knew from the first who were the ones that did not believe and who was the one that would betray him. And he said, For this reason I have told you that no one can come to me unless it is granted by the Father. Because of this, many of his disciples turned back and no longer went about with him. So Jesus asked the twelve, Do you also wish to go away? And Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom can we go? You have the words of eternal life. We have come to believe and know that you are the Holy One of God. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. One of the hardest decisions I ever face is when I walk into Baskin Robbins 31 flavors. It's true because vanilla is always a winner. But my tooth is a little bit of a sweet tooth and so I like chocolate, but not dark chocolate, milk chocolate. But then I like also the blending of Rocky Road with the chocolate ice cream and pecans or almonds and marshmallows. Just a little bit of sweet, ooey, gooey softness. And what about the sherbet? Orange sherbet, rainbow sherbet, sometimes raspberry sherbet, butter pecan sometimes pralines and cream, sometimes cookies and cream. These are tough decisions. And then, and then we turn to the scriptures. Joshua says to the Israelites, make your choice whom you will serve. Jesus turns to his disciples and said, the way is going to be tough. Are you sure you want to stay with me? And in both cases, the Israelites and his disciples say, where else would we go? Whom else would we serve? Because the way of the Lord leads to life. How do we make our choice? How do we choose faithfulness to God as individuals? In our humanity, we find that difficulty is often more than we can bear. And sometimes turning things over to God is just too difficult. And so we hang on to that which we should really be letting go of. So make your choice. Is it going to be the Lord? Is it going to be following Jesus, even though the way might be hard? Jen talked about putting on the armor of the Lord, and I think that 
Each day is a choice to put on the armor of the Lord, that breastplate, that helmet, that sword, and that shield, not just for protection, but so that we can combat evils in life with love. Choosing love is often very, very difficult. Choosing life that comes with love is often a challenge. But God is the one who makes belief possible. But humans are still required to accept it. What is it about a relationship with God or with Jesus Christ that gives us belief? Belief, according to Magre de Vega, says that belief comes at the intersection of God's grace and human free will, the divine and the human intertwine. So this ability to believe in Jesus comes from our own free will, even though God makes it possible for us to come together. Make your choice. Whom will you serve? Simon Peter answered, Lord, to whom can we go? You have the words of eternal life. We have come to believe and know that you are the Holy One of God. In what ways have we encountered the Holy One of God? Perhaps in the face of someone who is coming into the church asking for food and we are able to provide a meal Perhaps holding the door open for someone is coming face to face with the Holy One of God. Sometimes taking on the playground bully is coming face to face with the Holy One of God. Showing love in the face of evil we come face to face with the Holy One of God. Each day we choose to put on that armor. Each day we choose to follow Jesus. Each day and sometimes each hour we make our choice. And so I ask you, can you make your choice? The choice is sometimes difficult, oversimplified by looking into the coolers at Baskin Robbins, and yet as simple as choosing vanilla. Dependable, reliable, always refreshing, and always good to the last drop. I'm not saying that God and choosing God is vanilla ice cream, but I am saying that choosing God, we cannot go wrong. We cannot be mistaken in our choice of following the Lord Jesus, who has taught us to love one another, even when it's the most difficult choice to love someone else. My friends, as we face our choices, even in the most difficult of days, let us choose the Lord, for we have come to believe and know that the Lord is holy and that Christ is the Holy One of God. Amen.
and amen. I'll invite you to please stand as you are able and let us sing together. With the whole church, let us declare what we believe using the words adapted from the Confession of 1967. The life, death, and resurrection and promised coming of Jesus Christ has set the pattern for the church's mission. His human life involves the church in the common life of all people. His service to men and women commits the church to work for every form of human well-being. His suffering makes the church sensitive to all suffering and so that it sees the face of Christ in the faces of persons in every kind of need. His crucifixion discloses to the church God's judgment on the inhumanity that marks human relations and the awful consequences of the church's own complicity in injustice. In the power of the risen Christ, hope of his coming, the church sees the promise of God's renewal of human life in society and of God's victory over all wrong. The church follows this pattern in the form of its life and in the method of its action. So to live and serve is to confess Christ as Lord. You may be seated.
loving God, creator of all that is and all that has been and all that is yet to be, we make our prayer for you. We pray for your church, that it would be a beacon of light and love and hope in the world, that in every corner your love would be known because your church boldly declares it. We pray for this congregation that it would be faithful in its service to you, that we would choose to serve you, the Lord, with all of our heart and all of our mind and all of our being. We pray for the world, for the well-being of this earth that you have created, that your peace and justice would be known. We pray for the nations and their leaders. We pray for our community, for our nation. We pray for the poor, for those who suffer from oppression. We pray for those who are sick, We pray for those who grieve. We pray for the lonely. Hear our prayers, O oh God, as we pray for those who suffer in body, mind, or spirit, whose needs are known only to you. We make our prayer in the name of your Son, Jesus the Christ who taught his disciples to pray with the boldness of children, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And now, my friends, recognizing that all that we have and all that we are comes from the Lord our God, let us now give back to God our gifts and our offerings.
abundance. Receive now these our gifts and multiply them and use them for the mission and ministry of your church according to your will. We pray in the name of Jesus Christ and all God's children say, Amen. You may be seated. Go, Greg, go. At this, at this time, excuse me, at this time I'd like to invite any students, preschool through college, any teachers, any administrative staff to come forward. We love you. We want to bless you. All teachers. All staff. All students. As every generation of our family of faith worships together today, we come together asking God's peace in this beautiful community. We welcome the beginning of another school year, recognizing that, the, that it brings the opportunity of a fresh start along with some anxieties. Um, we have um, this token reminder that you are loved for each of you and never alone, that God's got your back. Okay, let us pray. God, our teacher who helps us to understand the world among us, thank you for the privilege of education. You have blessed our communities with teachers who take new skills and concepts and pass them along to each new class of young people. You have blessed us with administrators and support staff that work tirelessly to create a safe and welcome space for all students and teachers. God, who came as a child to show us how to be fully human, to show us how to be children of God, you have given our children and youth minds that grow and develop in unique ways and at unique speeds, and we are astounded by that miracle. You speak to us through the words, action, play, and feelings of children. You call us to listen to the Spirit speaking through our young siblings in Christ. We celebrate the beginning of this school year and ask for your blessing upon the students, the educators, the staff, and the families that support them. But in the celebration of education and learning, we do not forget there are children and families and teachers who do not have the resources they need. When systems are unjust, the outcomes are simply unacceptable. Today, we remember those who are beginning this year, those who have what they need to learn and grow in safety, those who lack supplies, teachers, safe buildings, and accommodations for all needs and abilities. We pray for restoration where there is brokenness. Loving God, coat the year before us with miracles of your mercy and strength and help us appreciate most of all the bedrock miracle of your presence with us in every single ordinary sacred moment. May the changes in ourselves and the freshness of a new year bring layers of goodness to this time in your lives. Lead us this school year into, living, into life-giving rhythms of grace and light where our regular routines become the framework for worship and blessing. May we be filled with loving kindness for ourselves and everyone around us. May the prayers of your faith community keep our students, our educators, and staff safe, healthy, and full of joy. And together, all God's children say, Amen.
My friends, go out this week choosing every day to serve the Lord, knowing that the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship and communion of the Holy Spirit remain with us this day and forevermore. Amen and amen.